Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stuff I found for this episode. Over at Slash Gear, MakerBot rolls out new glow-in-the-dark filament and more. Some of the most interesting and affordable 3D printers that come out of the... Uh, I'm sorry. Some of the most interesting and affordable 3D printers out there come from MakerBot. The company has, also has a cool desktop 3D scanner that can take just about anything that you can fit on it and create a digital copy of it, allowing you to print your own 3D version. Now, they've announced some new filaments that are shipping... Uh, giving owners of the 3D printers new colors and artistic options. It's pretty neat. Definitely check it out. So there are three new filaments that will be available online and in the retail MakerBot store in New York. They're made with a special phosphorus dye, and it's called the MakerBot Glow-in-the-Dark PLA Filament. How intensely they glow depends on the intensity of the light used to charge it. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. From CoolestGadgets.com, Swan Security announces the Bubble Bomber Mini RC Helicopter. A global leader in monitoring solutions, Swan Security has just announced something that will border on the fun side of things. After all, isn't there a saying that goes something like this? All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Make sure that the security line might <laughs> be fun despite an air of seriousness about it. Swan Security has unveiled their new Bubble Bomber Mini RC helicopter. So it uh, will be able to offer security staff a fun and unique way to carry out missions of their own where it will arrive complete with the most recent and cutting edge features of modern remote control helicopter. Apart from that, it would also be designed with Swan's Easy Fly Gyro technology so that's a snap for new users without any experience to take to the skies in a jiffy. So you can get them over at Fry's Electronics. They are $59.99 a pop. Um, the bubble bomber has been named so simply because it will arrive complete with a bubble solution and an injector that will be able to squeeze the liquid into the helicopter's undercarriage. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out, especially if you're looking for some, you know, entry-level remote control helicopter fun. From Ars Technica, Google Fiber now explicitly permits home servers. Commercial servers are still off limit, but a business product is in the works. Google Fiber's terms of service now reflect uh, what Google has been unofficially saying. Um, previously, uh, Google's acceptable use policy uh, had some controversy uh, when Google was, was uh, basically saying that servers of any type are banned on Google Fiber. Well, now it says that uh, that only applies to business servers and that the use of applications such as multiplayer gaming, video conferencing, home security, and others which may include server capabilities but are not being used but are being used for legal and non-commercial purposes are acceptable and encouraged. So, uh the old policy was any type of server. The new policy is, well, you can run personal stuff. Just no, you know, don't host a, you know, news.com <laughs> or anything like that. So uh, it's nice to see that they've kind of uh, brought the use, you know, acceptable use policy in line with, um, with what they've unofficially been saying. From Engadget, 3D printing gets metal with European Space Agency's AMAZE project. If you're interested in the future of 3D printing, the London Science Museum was the place to be on uh, today. Well, not today. Well, yes, today, as the European Space Agency and its partners hosted a consortium to celebrate the launch of the AMAZE project. AMAZE, AMAZE which stands for Additive Manufacturing Aiming Toward Zero Waste and Efficient Production of High-Tech Metal Products. Oof. Um is a joint effort to take the next logical step in the evolution of 3D printing, manufacturing metal 
parts. So at today's events, uh, today's event uh, components made of tungsten alloy were a particular highlight as the extremely high temperatures of such material can withstand up to 3000 degrees Celsius would make them ideal for use in spacecraft and nuclear fusion environments. The process of 3D printing metal also would allow engineers to design beyond the limits of traditional metal casting as seen in the Airbus hinges above. So pretty awesome. Definitely uh, take a look at this and um, should be pretty cool. From TheVerge.com, Elon Musk's grasp, ho, Grasshopper rocket makes its highest leap to date. Uh, that's right. Um, the Grasshopper, uh, in a new video from SpaceX, it shows the Grasshopper rocking its uh, highest point to date, uh, which is 744 meters. The test flight comes a month after months. Uh, Musk demonstrated the Grasshopper launching, flying 300 feet laterally, then returning to the launch pad and landing vertically. SpaceX has a long way to go before its reusable rockets are ready to deliver their cargo to the cosmos, but combined with the successful test flight of the more powerful Falcon 9 rocket last month, Musk has said, I think we now have all the pieces of the puzzle to bring the rocket back home. Pretty awesome. That's pretty neat. 744 meters. Wow, that's up there. Uh, from Hack a Day, Rasp Z Wave Automation is automated. Home automation keeps popping up here at Hack a Day. So uh, Christian Zatanel has decided to share his Raspberry Pi based system with us. This build takes a firm stance on the automated side of the automation versus control debate. Um, no user input, meaning that there's no user input necessary. He relies on geofencing to detect whether he is driven out, driven outside the set radius and automatically turns off the lights and locks his door. So it takes advantage of Z-Wave products, which are your typical wireless remote control gadgets, but tacks on a third-party Raspberry, which is a Raspberry Pi board, uh, to give it control over off-the-shelf Z-Wave devices. The final step in the integration of a custom, is a custom iOS app that keeps tabs on the geofence boundaries and signals the Pi to control the lights and the front door lock. So pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. From Engadget, uh, camera showdown iPhone 5S versus the iPhone 5 have been tested in the wilds of Patagonia. One of our favorite travel photographers, Austin Mann, snapped up an iPhone 5 and flew to Iceland last year in order to pit Apple's latest flagship against its prior king in a bitterly cold camera test. This year, Mr. Mann hopped on a flight down to Patagonia in order to pit the iPhone 5S's sensor against that of the 5. One of the more remarkable findings was the dynamic exposure applied to panoramas with the 5S. In his testing, pans that involved dark and light subjects were accounted for properly without the use of high dynamic range. The result was a far more evenly lit panoramic image, whereas prior iPhone cameras tended to blow out a portion of the image to compensate for another portion. So uh, one of the other things is the dynamic range of the 5S is said to be markably, markedly better than on the 5. Um, in post-processing images taken with the 5S maintained integrity far better than the 5 when using Snapseed to recover details lost in the shadows. Not surprisingly, shutter lag has gone from impressive to non-existent, <laughs> and the 5S's burst mode is intensely useful, particularly if you're shooting a lot of action. So pretty awesome. Um, you know, I would expect Apple to start, you know, in, in terms of resolution, I don't really, you know, 8 megapixels is pretty good resolution for the vast majority of what you're going to be taking a picture with on your camera. Um, I, you know, I really kind of more than anything expect Apple to start pushing the dynamic range of the cameras. You know, it'd be great if, you know, eight bit pictures, you know, 24 bit pictures, which is eight bits per color pixel in red, green, blue, you know, that's eight stops of dynamic range. Technically it'd be great if they could get, you know, actually be able to capture that much dynamic range. Just think, you know, I mean, you're starting to get close to what is acceptable dynamic range for human vision, you know, simultaneously eight stops of dynamic range into your eyeball is actually kind of stressful. Um, if you actually really are getting eight stops of difference between the brightest point and the least brightest point at the same time, that's 
you know, a lot of dynamic range. Uh, anyway, uh, should be pretty cool. Definitely check out the review, especially if you're into uh, photography. Uh, that will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do sub- subscribe if you haven't already done so. And for those of you who have, thank you for subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.